If Burt's Bees is your go-to lip balm, then this video is for you. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. I have shared a lot of lip balm formulations over the years, but today I am sharing my most Bertie of the bombs. I think my formulation is pretty close to the original and it costs about 35 cents per tube to make and most of that cost is the tube, not the ingredients. To start with, what is lip balm? It is a creamy, fatty solid that you, you know, spread on your lips to moisturize them and to prevent water loss. Lip balms can vary widely in their consistency. They can be kind of richer or thinner, they can be creamier or slippier, and of course different people have different preferences for what they love in a lip balm. From a formulating point of view, the key ingredients in a lip balm are some kind of a wax and then some kind of not wax fatty ingredients to sort of soften that wax enough that you can spread it on your mouth. The wax in lip balm formulations is what gives the balm that very characteristic kind of balm feeling and also helps it really stick around and stay on the mouth for a long time and you know work. So that's lip balms in general. What about this lip balm? So this beauty here is our inspiration for today's formulation and this is the traditional Burt's Bees beeswax lip balm with vitamin E and peppermint. This lip balm is creamy but still has great slip and has a really noticeable pepperminty pop. The ingredient list for Burt's Bees is pretty simple so really where the magic happens is getting those ingredients perfectly balanced to get that consistency just right. So let's grab that ingredient list and head into the studio and get started. The first thing you need to do when creating a dupe of something is to take a look at the ingredient list. For this pepperminty Burt's Bees lip balm, that ingredient list is beeswax, coconut oil, sunflower oil, peppermint oil, lanolin, tocopherol, rosemary leaf extract, soybean oil, canola oil, and limonene. These ingredients are listed in descending order. So we know there's more beeswax in this formulation than coconut oil and more coconut oil in this formulation than sunflower oil and so on and so forth. Once we get below the 1% line, which I'm estimating is around the tocopherol or the rosemary seed extract, the order of the ingredients doesn't have to be precise anymore. For my riff, I decided to simplify things a little bit. I dropped the rosemary leaf extract because we already have tocopherol in there to act as an antioxidant. Tocopherol is vitamin E. And I also decided to drop the soybean oil and the canola oil because they're in there at such tiny amounts. I figured I could easily meet the liquid oil requirements of the formulation using just sunflower oil. Limonene is listed on the ingredient list because it is an IFRA identified allergen and it is present in this formulation above 0.001%. Limonene is an incidental ingredient. It is part of the peppermint essential oil and hasn't been added independently. This ingredient list is pretty short, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways to combine these ingredients in this order and come up with a wide variety of very different lip balms. I created a lot of different versions of this formulation in my development process, and today I'm sharing the one that I think is closest to the original product, but I'm also sharing five more of them with my $5 and up patrons over on my Patreon. So if you are interested in seeing all the other variations and trying them and making them and seeing what you think, please consider becoming a patron. To make this beautifully Bertie lip balm, you are going to need 9.6 grams of beef Beeswax. The wax in a lip balm plays a massive role in how it feels, and beeswax is a gorgeous, creamy wax. It's really, really popular in lip balms for a very good reason. If you've ever tried to create a beeswaxy feeling lip balm without using beeswax, only using vegan waxes, you'll know how special beeswax is. I'm using a beautiful, unrefined beeswax that I picked up from an apiary in Manitoba, but judging by the color of the original Burt's Bees product, I'm pretty sure they use a refined and bleached beeswax. You'll need 9.45 grams of coconut oil. Coconut oil has really lovely slip, so it helps counter some of that tackiness that we can get from using lots of beeswax, allowing us to use a pretty good amount of beeswax, but also have a lip balm that glides really nicely across the skin. I used a coconut oil that smells like coconut. Mine is the traditional coconut oil from Baraka Shea Butter, which was a gift. You could use refined coconut oil if you want though, and that will really give give the peppermint essential oil the star role in the scent department. You'll need 9.3 grams of sunflower seed oil, though you could use a different inexpensive liquid carrier oil like sweet almond oil or apricot kernel oil, and you're not going to notice a huge difference. You'll also need a wee bit of lanolin, just 0.75 grams. Lanolin is a gorgeous skin soothing moisturizer, but 
but please make sure you pick up refined lanolin, especially for this formulation. Unrefined lanolin really doesn't smell very good and I am not a huge fan of having it anywhere near my mouth. There are just two ingredients in our cool down phase. You'll need 0.75 grams of peppermint essential oil for that minty tingle. Menthol is the constituent of peppermint essential oil that gives it its tingly loveliness and different peppermint essential oils will have different menthol contents. So if you like a really, really like tingly kind of effervescent cooling peppermint lip balm, make sure you are looking at the data sheets from your supplier and buying a peppermint essential oil that has quite a lot of menthol in it. I'm using peppermint essential oil at 2.5% of this formulation, which is really quite a lot of essential oil, and this lip balm still isn't as tingly as Burt's original. They could be using even more essential oil than I'm using, or they could be using a peppermint essential oil that has a higher menthol content. You can adjust the formulation to use even more peppermint essential oil if you really want it to be very, very tingly, but please tread carefully carefully because 2.5% of essential oil is really quite a lot of essential oil already. And lastly, we have 0.15 grams of vitamin E to help extend the shelf life of the lip balm. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, so it helps slow down the oxidization of the oils in the formulation. To make the lip balm, we are going to combine the heated phase ingredients in a heat resistant glass measuring cup. The heated phase is the beeswax, the coconut oil, the sunflower seed oil, and the lanolin. I like to use Pyrex measuring cups for making lip balm in because they they're quite heavy glass, so they've got good high heat capacity, and the pouring spout is really useful for getting the liquid lip balm into our tiny little lip balm tubes. Once you have your four heated phase ingredients in your measuring cup, pop that measuring cup into a water bath to melt everything through. My water bath is just a small saucepan with about an inch of water in the bottom of it, so stick your measuring cup in there and stick that on the stovetop over medium low heat and heat until everything has melted. While the heated phase is melting, prepare your lip balm tubes for easy filling. You can also use tins for this formulation, but I'm really not a big fan of needing to rub my finger on my mouth when I'm out in public, so I prefer the twist up tubes. You'll need seven standard size lip balm tubes for this formulation, and I find it's quite helpful to bundle them together with an elastic band so that they don't fall over. Once the heated phase has melted, we need to move quite quickly, so remove your measuring cup from the water bath, dry off the outside of that measuring cup, quickly weigh in the cool down phase, stir to combine, and then pour into the lip balm tubes to set up and cool. We want to reduce the amount of time that the essential oil and vitamin E are exposed to heat. So once they're in there, get that into your lip balm tubes as quickly as possible so that everything can cool down. Once the balm is in the tube, simply leave everything to cool. If you have bundled the tubes together, you can come back after about 10 minutes and unbundle them. The tubes will have set up enough that if you tip one over, it's not going to spill, but when they're all clustered together, they take a little bit longer to cool, so you can kind of break them apart and give them a chance to really come to room temperature before carrying on. Now, as the lip balm cools, you will notice little divots starting to form at the top of the balm. If you're wondering why this happens, Realize Beauty has an entire blog post about this, so I'll link to that in the description box below. It's a really interesting read. If these divots bother you, you can solve them with a heat gun or a hair dryer to kind of blast the surface of the lip balm to remelt it, so it kind of pools in and and refills that little hole. I don't recommend going in and kind of pouring a hat of liquid lip balm on top of that because I have found that that little hat tends to pop off as you start using the lip balm because it doesn't bind properly with the cooler lip balm underneath it. Once the lip balms have fully cooled to room temperature, cap them and then wipe them down with a bit of paper towel that has some rubbing alcohol on it. This will help remove any sort of excess oil that has got on the outsides of the tube so that your labels will stick and then label them and you are done. So that's it for the DIY version. Let's take a look at mine versus Burt's. You can see that my lip balm has more of a golden color due to using unrefined beeswax rather than refined beeswax. Consistency wise, they are pretty darn similar. I don't think they are absolutely identical, but I am very hard pressed to tell them apart. I had a lot of fun working on this formulation and I hope that you enjoy it. If you'd like to learn more about this formulation, please make sure you are checking out the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. It has the entire formulation written out, links to places to purchase all of the ingredients, information on shelf life, substitutions and scaling, and a whole lot more. And if you would like to check out those other five versions of this formulation and learn more about the development process of this formulation, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Marie Rayma. Thanks so much for watching and happy making.